Manx Radio Sport. Very good evening to you and welcome to our listeners on Manx Radio AM 1368. You're listening to Saturday Sport Classified, bringing you a roundup for all the latest football, rugby and hockey results across the Isle of Man. And we're going to dive straight into it. Let's take a look at the Manx football fixtures. It's been another thrilling Saturday of action at the moment. And Tony Meppham is back to join us. And I know he's furiously scribbling away across the desk from me. But Tony, very good evening to you. Good evening to you, Rob. Yeah, we're just trying to uh, get them all together. We're getting there. The microphone then. So uh, I think you've got the classified uh, results there and we're still one or two missing. Indeed. Yeah, we'll come on to that right now. So it'll give you a chance to have a bit of a breather before we get to that. So as Tony very rightly mentioned there, we do still have a couple of results awaiting to come through. So if you do have any results, please do text us here at 166-177 if you haven't done so already. So, so far, your classified footballing results for Saturday, the 22nd of October. We'll start with the Canada Life Men's Premier League. St George's nil, Russian United three. Laxey versus St John's, awaiting result. Douglas High School Old Boys versus Douglas Royal, awaiting result. Moran 1, Union Mills 4. Onken 1, Air United 1. Corinthians versus Ramsey, awaiting result. The DPS Limited Division 2. St Mary's 2, Michael United 2. Colby 3, Douglas Athletic 3. Castletown 10, Jims 1. Foxdale versus Douglas and District is postponed. And Braddon 2, Ramsey Youth Centre 6. And then we move into Canada Life, Combination 1. St John's 4, Laxey 0. Douglas Royal 4, Douglas Old Boys 0. Union Mills versus Moran, awaiting result. And Air versus Onken and Ramsey versus Corinthians postponed. And in the DPS Limited, Combination 2. Michael United 1, St Mary's 7. Jim's 4, Castletown 3. Douglas and District versus Foxdale, awaiting result. And Ramsey Youth Centre versus Braddon, awaiting result. Those are your classified results from Manx Football Leagues so far. Like I say, if there are any other updates in terms of results that we haven't had yet and you're able to send them through, please do so at 166-177. Well, let's take a look through at some of the results that we've already had. Tony, we'll take a look with the Canada Life Men's Premier League to start with. And we talked a little bit about this this afternoon and last night as well, about how important games are now becoming for Russian United after a tricky start as well. And this is a big result away from home for them. It finished St George's nil, Russian United 3. Yeah, terrific result. And as we said at lunchtime when the uh, news came through that uh, FC Alaman had uh, taken Kieran McNulty, it was always going to be a little bit uh, tougher for uh, St George's. And today, uh, Russian got it right, so well done to them because it's been a tough time for them. And uh, Furo Davies got the first one after 25 minutes. Chris uh, Larazardos got the second. He uh, normally chips away in the combi, but back in the first team. And uh, Cameron Dudler as well uh, got the other one. So good result that for Russian. Gives them a bit of breathing space. And also the most important thing is lifts them off the bottom of the league. Absolutely. From St George's perspective, does it feel a bit like a, a missed opportunity because they've been playing some good football recently? Yeah, I think so. But it just depends what uh, team they had out uh, today because... Uh, certainly in the last game against uh, St John's, they only just missed out on something from that game. And uh, the team is quite strong, but they do seem to be struggling. They haven't got a combination team to uh, pick players from, so that doesn't help things. Uh, and today, you know, 3-0, that's pretty convincing for Russia in that. So it's back to the drawing board for Johnny Myers, and hopefully they can get things right, ready for the next game. Well, moving on, we have another result in, in fact, in the Canada Life Men's Premier League that we were waiting for. And by the looks of it, there could be a big shock that's just happened at the top of the table. Laxey won, St John's United nil. St John's their first loss of the season, Tony. Yeah, it was. And, uh, you know, St John's, uh, we touched on it before. Dean Lee's missing. Uh, Dean was away playing for uh, FC Isle of Man. Sam Ingham was injured as well. Uh, you know, you've got uh, Callum Taggart as well, who's struggling with injury. So when you're missing quality like that, it's always going to be a little bit harder. But take note of St John's uh, start combination at the season it's strong you know there's some good players in there but Charlie Robinson was the difference today he got the goal for uh, Laxey and as you say that's uh, Laxey's um, super three points for them but it's unfortunately for St John's their second defeat of the season 
Indeed, um, a result we are still waiting on is uh, Douglas High School All Boys and Got Douglas it. Royal in the Premier League. Oh, you do Got have it. it. Do Come do through. enlighten us. Yeah, we have uh, it's Douglas High School All Boys three, Douglas Royal five. Haven't got uh, Douglas High School old boys scorers. If you could text us through one six six one seven seven, please. Uh, but I've got uh, Douglas Royals, and it was uh, Andy Asperidge with one. Uh, Dominic McCarry Brennan got a goal. Uh, Blake Henwood on the island, he got a goal. And Harley Jackson, he's only young, about seventeen. Richard, uh, is a young fella. Well done to uh, him. Well done to Douglas Royal. Big three points for them. Absolutely, and uh, Union Mills involved in the next game. They travelled to Moran and Union Mills. Well, they've been absolutely on a roll recently, and it has been continuing. This was going to be a tough game in different ways, I guess, but they've got the job done. Union Mills 4-1 winners away at Moran. Yeah, we'll have to uh, do the league tables in a minute, uh, Rob. We've just uh, got some of the scores in, um, but uh, certainly they've moved up ahead of... uh Peel in the league now because uh, Peel free week today, uh, but Tyler Hughes got one for Union Mills, but Luke Booth he's on their uh, fire at the moment and um, he got a hat-trick, so well done to him, well done to Union Mills. Haven't got Moran's goal scorer, so if you could text us through, 166-177. Absolutely, and uh, moving now to Onken versus Air United now with St John's with that narrow loss away at Laxey today. Air United could have had a chance to close the gap at the top, but much like their northern counterparts over in Ramsey, they just couldn't quite capitalise today. It's ended all square between Onken and Air United, 1-1. It did, and uh, how, I'm got Ayers goal scorer, but uh, certainly for Onken, an eventful game for Ethan Levers. He scored for Onken, and then got uh, two bookings, and then ended up uh, getting a red card, so he missed out the remainder of the game. But uh, the, the all important thing was for him getting that equaliser before he left the field of play. But um, I think that's a fair result that for uh, Onken when you look at uh, the league tables. Onken are in eighth uh, this morning. Air uh, United were in third, so it was expected to be a tough game. Uh, but uh, Ethan's equalisers shared the points and uh, uh, just need to uh, try and get back to winning ways. And then over at Bala Fletcher, a close one here as well. Corinthians 3, Ramsey 2. Yeah, we haven't got uh, Ramsey's goal scorers, but uh, for Corinthians, I believe, and whether it's true, that uh, Corinthians were 3-0 up after seven minutes and all those goals scored by uh, Josh Ridings and Josh Ridings had a penalty towards the end of the game as well, uh, but uh, the keeper, Kirill Vilev, uh, saved that one. Uh, but uh, Ramsey has, uh, just missed the second goal, uh, but uh, they got it to uh, 3-1 on 24 minutes. Uh, not too sure um, sort of what other opportunities they had in the game, but certainly the last uh, 20 minutes, 25 minutes I saw uh, of the second half, Ramsey had some good chances, but so did Corinthians. But uh, Corinthians uh, remain unbeaten. They've played uh, four games now, won three, drew one. Uh, so uh, they're doing OK. Well, just before we move on to DPS Limited Division 2's results, we've just had a message in that collates the current points at the top of the Canada okay. Life Men's Premier League. Two points separating the top four here. St John's still at the top on 15. Peel, Air United and Union Mills all on 13. This this league just gets better and better, doesn't it, week by week? Well, it does. And, uh, you know, uh, we had a phone call, didn't we, or a text message at lunchtime just saying that um, they thought that FC Isle of Man were hampering sort of uh, the Manx League. But you, you can't say that really. OK, it's uh, having... Uh, you know, sort of problems here, there and everywhere. But, you know, that's football and it's made this Premier League a lot closer. You look at that now, St George is the most successful team in Manx football uh, for sort of uh, 10 years. Unbelievable they had and here they are, uh, bottom of the table now. But, you know, it's just one of those things. It's up to everyone to step up. And uh, when you see teams up there peeled back in, they struggled last year. You've got uh, St John's, who's still top of the table. You've got Air United in there, the champions. Uh, Ramsey, Union Mills and uh, Corinthians and Laxey today, they go on 10 points. So it really is a battle going on. And they're all looking to get qualified for the DK, T-Card Railway Cup semi-finals. I'm still not a betting man. I'm telling you this now. Yeah. I'm still not a betting man on this. <laughs> we'll have another week and then we'll we'll firm up. Then we'll see. Then we'll see. <laughs> okay. We move on to Division 2 and the early kickoff today was at 1.45. And Tony, you were at this game. We'd all had eyes on this game and it uh, turned out to be an absolute cracker. St Mary's versus Michael United. It finished 2-2. It was an absolute home dinger. I enjoyed it. I, I wasn't too sure where Division 2 was this year. Uh, but after seeing two of the top three sides meet today, um, it was a great game. Uh, if I had to give a, an honest opinion, um, I think uh, St Mary should have won it. I thought the first uh, sort of 20, 25 minutes in the second half, they played some really good football. But, um, you know, they had chances all over. I thought Owen Canepa, uh, so just before half-time, could have had a hat-trick. 
quite easily. But uh, the goalkeeper was absolutely uh, brilliant. Jordan Kraut for Michael United. Fantastic uh, display by him. But unfortunately, it was his own goal that broke the deadlock. Um, he couldn't do much about it. Cross in, hit him and uh, went in 1-0. But then Cal Moore uh, equalised to make it uh, 1-1. And then a minute later, another cross in for St Mary's. Whether it crossed the line, you know, Peter Greenhill couldn't... Um, he gave what he thought was a goal. A few people said to me he didn't cross the line. I don't know. It was a good distance away. But Paddy Cooper struck it, hit the bar, came down, and it was awarded, and it was uh, 2-1. But then uh, Dominic Smith, it was, who got the equaliser. Corner ball came in. Goalkeeper had made the way up for Michael as well and uh, dodged him. I thought he was going to get his head to it, but the ball was played back in, and there was Dominic to finish it off. So 2 till. It meant an awful lot to both sides but Michael when they got that equaliser the place just went absolutely berserk and I enjoyed it the passion and the football was good the fitness levels were good and take note of Michael United they've got some good players there and it's a good team and a couple of games in hand I think it's fair to say St Mary's still hold the cards at the top as it stands but uh, St uh, Michael United I should say are still in the mix as are Brad and beneath them still got games to play yeah they have and uh, next week I think it's St Mary's free week um, so it'll sort of tighten the league up a little bit. But uh, St Mary's today go on 14 points, so they remain top of the table. But you've got uh, Braddon, who lost, I think, if I remember rightly. So we'll check on that one. Um, so they're still on their uh, nine. But uh, Michael, with that 1.10, go up into uh, second place. So even if Michael win next week, um, they're not going to go above St Mary's. So uh, St Mary's, you know, looking good. Jamie Skillen in their own canopy. You've got Joe Canopy. Defensively, they look really solid. I thought Chris Walsh, Josh um, Evans kept things together at the back. Uh, goalkeeping wise was good. First time I've seen their goalkeeper, but yeah, St Mary's look as if they're favourites, possibly for the DPS Limited Division Two. Well, there's another team in the mix as well that we'll come on to in a second. Well, there was another thrilling draw as well in Division 2 today. It finished Colby 3, Douglas Athletic 3. Yeah, Colby led at one stage, 2-0 uh, Jordan Edge with uh, both goals. Uh, but uh, Dave uh, Thomas it was who got the other one. Uh, Douglas Athletic, good fight back by them. Well done. Matty Moffat got one. Uh, Ricky McCann got a uh, second goal. And still playing away, Jeff uh, Murphy, he got the third one. So 3-3 three, three points shared. And also, I did actually have a, um, a message from when we were getting those results coming into us. Um, I was asked to point out that the referee in the Colby versus Douglas Athletic game, uh, Ollie, I don't have a surname, sadly, um, the uh, gentleman who uh, let me know, but he just wanted to say that he thought the referee had an absolutely fantastic game in a very uh, competitive match as well. But uh, full marks to the referee for how he, he handled the game. Yeah, it was always good to hear. That'll be Ollie Johnson, yeah. Ollie's a good referee and uh, he's one of those people that... Um, Seems to have one or two people on his back. He, he's just that type of referee that attracts that. And I can think of one or two others as well. But he's a good referee and it's great to hear reports. Because again today, the two games, I saw Peter Greenhill down at the uh, bowl. I thought he refereed really well. Um, you know, not many arguments, but um, sort of up at uh, Ramsey and Corinthians. Dave Kelly, I think, uh, got a bit of a hard time. Uh, when he awarded the penalty towards the end, was it a penalty? He thought it was, so... There you go. He, he's the man in the middle. And then um, he sim binned a player for comments to him, dissent. So, you know, players have got to learn um, from that. But, uh, you know, three goals, all I heard was that the three goals in the first seven minutes support the game. Um, so that's nothing to do with the referee. If the goal's the goals and that's it. So, yeah, we've, we've got to look after these referees because uh, without them, we've got no games of football. So just tread carefully. Very true. Well, uh, not quite as even in the game in the south of the island between Castletown and Jim's. Castletown emerging winners by 10 goals to one. Yeah, they keep marching on there. Castletown in a bit of a stride now. That's their uh, fifth game, so it puts them on 12 points. Uh, but uh, today they were 4-0 up at half-time. The two boys uh, are doing well, the two brothers. Edson De Silva, he got four. Junior De Silva, he got one. Alex Crawley on the score sheet as well. And then you had Danny Lane and uh, Fingal Watson. Good, strong performance by uh, Castletown. Not too sure got Jim's goal. Well, another game, Foxdale versus Douglas and District, that was postponed yesterday. I think the decision was made because the pitch just wasn't quite in the in the right condition with the weather we've had. So we'll move on to the last game. Braddon, we did mention them before. They've been in and around those top areas of the table, but this might just deal a bit of a blow to them because they've lost at home to Ramsey Youth Centre by six goals to two. Yeah, it's the size of the scoreline as well, which has surprised me because when you look at Ramsey Youth Centre, who are eighth, played five for four points this morning, and uh, then you look at Braddon, who'd played four for uh, nine points. A bit of a difference in it, but, uh, you know, Ramsey U Centre, the relegated uh, side, haven't got their goal scorers, but uh, certainly for Braddon, Joe Burrow's got one. 
and uh, Callum Holden uh, is a young lad, I think, and he's scoring plenty of goals, so we'll have to have a look at him. But uh, another sort of uh, solid performance by Braddon, but today caught out by a better side in Ramsey Centre and Old Boys. OK, let's move into the Combination League, starting off with Canada Life Combi 1, um, St John's 4-0 winners at home to Laxey. Liam uh, Bull got uh, one of the goals for St John's, Jamie Crook, uh, my mate Liam Sale got one, and Kieran Lees as well. Uh, Laxey, a lot of good young players in there, but they've got to learn the trade as well with St John's. They won Combination 2 last season, so they're strong, a lot of experience in there. Usual goal scorers, Jamie Crook, Liam Sale, you know, they're good players, they're first team players, and uh, today St John's came out winners 4-0. And in the next game, Douglas Royal versus Douglas High School. Old boys, the same scoreline there went the way of Douglas Royal. They won by four goals to nil. Yeah, old boys, uh, bottom of the league, I think, uh, in this one. Uh, Douglas Royal expected to win it, but maybe not by four, but good performance. Um, I was watching uh, sort of uh, one or two of them walk off, and uh, so certainly Kevin Ballard's uh, got a bit of a problem there. It looked as if he had a, a sore injury on his uh, leg, so hopefully that will sort itself out. Corey Wilkie got one, Craig Cowan on the score sheet as well, and Owen Stewart got the other one. And then this is well, this is a result we didn't have until a few minutes ago. Thank you very much for sending it through between uh, Union Mills and Moran. High scoring game, and it's Moran who come out on top. It's Union Mills 3, Moran 7. And that's all the information we've got, unless you've got some goal scorers there, Rob. We don't at the moment, so if you do have goal scorers, please send them through. one double six, one double seven, And the other two games in uh, Canada Life Combi 1, Air versus Onken and Ramsey versus Corinthians, both postponed today as well. So they'll be played at a later date because of the uh, pitch conditions following the rather treacherous weather out there. OK, last but certainly not least, let's move on to DPS Limited. Combination 2, Michael and St Mary's met there as well, and it was St Mary's who came out on top in this one. It finished Michael United 1, St Mary's 7. Yeah, they're strong in this league, and uh, the main threat today was Liam Bowley. Uh, he got a hat-trick. Uh, Kieran Smith, he got a couple of goals. Uh, Rob McGinn uh, got one, and Max uh, Gelling. So good performance there by St Mary's. And then quite a close one here, Jim's and Castletown. Although it was a rather one-sided contest, I think, up in Division 2, it was much closer in combination to finish Jim's 4, Castletown 3. Yeah, haven't got uh, Jim's goal scorers. Text us through, 166-177, if you could, please. Jim's led at half-time, three goals to two. Uh, Harrison Pickard with two goals for Castletown. Carl Watson with the other one. And then we don't have a result yet for Douglasson District Got versus it. Foxdale. Oh, you do yep. have it? But fire away. Douglasson District uh, 4, Foxdale 1, 1-1 one, one at half-time. Uh, Mark Quirk got two, one from the penalty spot. Richie Radcliffe uh, got a goal. And Joseph Waddington got the other one. Haven't got Foxdale's goal scorer. And last but certainly not least, we have Ramsey Youth Centre and Braddon. That finished one all. And it was, and uh, I love it when I see this young lad's name because I remember what a big, big uh, footballer he was in Manx football. Uh, Peter Langridge's son, Lee Langridge. Peter was unbelievable. I don't know how many times he's won the Golden Boot. He represented the island so many times and uh, absolutely terrific. And uh, his son's got the same ability by the look of it. So Lee got the equaliser. Haven't got Ramsey Centre's goal scorer. Very well, well, those are your Manx football results from today. Well, we're going to move on to FC Isle of Man and a huge result for them today in the FA Vars. They had the long old journey to North East England to take on the high-flying Billingham Town who are crushing it at the top of the Northern League Division 2 at the moment. But the Ravens are soaring high after a massive result today. They have beaten Billingham Town by four goals to one at Bedford Terrace to reach the second round of the FA Vars for the first time. And hopefully now we can be joined live up in the northeast by Paul Jones who is up at the ground. Paul, very good afternoon to you. Good afternoon Rob. Well Paul, just first off, an absolutely fantastic result against uh, a team that are absolutely flying in their respective division. Four goals today as well, clinical, two from Luke Murray, one from Carl Clark and one from Charlie Higgins. What are the big things that went right today? Um, well, scoring goals obviously, um, it certainly helped. Um, we, we had plenty of chances and, and the lads did did well to put to put four of those away, and um, you know Billingham didn't didn't threaten hugely. They had no no clear really efforts at goal. Um, you know they had some threatening play down the down the sides on occasion, but you know we we kept them at bay really really well. So it was a strong defensive display from from the lads and the team. Um, but you know obviously you need to finish the goals off as well, which they've done. So yeah, generally a pleasing performance, um, especially off the back of going. 1-0 down within the first kind of minute and a half of play. So great reaction and, and overall a fantastic performance and result. 
Absolutely, and the fact that you know you found yourselves you found yourselves two one up at half time at the end. The fact that you had the the composure following you know recent tough results to to not hold just hold on to that lead but extend it as well. That just shows that the not just the quality but the confidence showed through in the squad today, didn't it? For sure, yeah. And I think you know when you when you talk to the players and they reflect on how the season's gone so far, they don't feel far away at all. They feel they're in every game, and I don't think confidence is a huge factor at the moment. And you know once what, you know, once the the worst thing that could happen happened, and you go one nil down, and you're on a bit of a shot to nothing, then then you know they they played ever so well for the rest of the game and, and looked fairly comfortable for large parts of it. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think the confidence at the moment is a, is a huge issue for them. Um, but but clearly, um, you know, finishing the chances that they had and and looking fairly comfortable through the game will will no doubt do them the world of good. And one of the star players today, Luke Murray, got himself on the score sheet twice today. Also a landmark appearance for him today, his 50th competitive appearance for FC Isle of Man. Just how important is he to the club as a whole? Fantastically important, to be honest. He's um, he's really coming into a good vein of form. Um, he's playing consistently now, which helps this season. And, you know, finding his feet really in that kind of centre-forward position. And, you know, he's, he's a real threat and, he, you know, more often than not, he takes a defender or two, you know, to, to keep him quiet, which frees up space for other players. And, you know, he's he's finding those players, bringing other people into the game and also then getting in and around the six-yard box and penalty spot to finish chances off. So his all-round game is coming on hugely so far this season. And uh, he's a really important player um, to the squad. Uh, and he links up really, really well at the moment with Stephen Whitley. Um, they've got a really good understanding. So, you know, they're a real threat between them at the moment. And also in the squad today, I know he didn't start, but a really key figure for the Ravens over the past season and a half or so. Alex Maitland travelled with the squad today. He's been a mainstay in that defence, particularly throughout last season. How good is it to have a senior figure like him coming back into the squad at this point? For sure it is. I think, you know, we're, we, we can't do the kids a disservice. You know, we've had some some really fantastic young players step in, often at short notice to, to fill some gaps because of player availability through injury and, and other things over the last four or five weeks. It may have been exceptional, but you know, like it does give the whole squad a little bit of a lift when you've got a player like Alex Maitland coming back into it and you know he's come on for Sean Quay and I have to say Sean was fantastic and headed everything that was thrown at him today and but it was nice to, to be in a position to give Alex a little bit of a run out and reintroduce him back into the team and, and you know He's got a fight on his hands, I think, to get back into the team. But once he does, then I'm sure we'll see the Alex of old, the, the, the steady Eddie at the back that, um, that, that keeps everything ticking along. And just one final question, into the second round of the FA Vars. What would it mean to have a home tie in the second round of the FA Vars in the coming weeks and months? Yeah, it'd be fantastic. Um, I, I, I think I might have to correct you. I think we're in the third round, but, but we got a buy in the first round. So this was the second round today. So I'm, I'm, I'm maybe almost sure that it's the, the 19th of November and uh, we'll be playing um, in the third round, but you might be right and I might be wrong. Um, but yeah, hopefully a home draw. Um, we're due to play Squires Gate away um, on, the, on the 19th of November. So that game will be postponed. Um, and, and probably played in a midweek and you know we'll all eyes on the draw and it would be absolutely fantastic to have a home game in the FA Vars uh, and hopefully uh, get a, a good crowd down to support the lads I can confirm it was the second qualifying round of the last game and this was the first round proper ah, so we were we were both in the right sort of region there <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I can't keep up at times, Rob, with all the games, to be honest. So um, hopefully we'll have a home draw and uh, we'll have another good result and we can have a little bit of a run in the cup. Absolutely. Well, Paul, thanks very much for taking a couple of minutes to chat with us. Uh, congratulations to the team and a, a safe journey home as well. Cheers, Rob. Thanks ever so much for having us on. All right, take care. Paul Jones of FC Alaman there. Well, Tony, I'll just bring you in for a final time there. Billingham Town 1, FC Alaman 4. That's a, a a pretty good result for the Ravens right now, isn't it? It's brilliant because they were 1-0 down, weren't they, at one stage? And uh, interesting to hear from Paul there. You know, form coming back into some players. Like Luke Murray was missing at the start of the season and then he's come back in and he's missing his sidekicks a little bit, isn't he, Dan Simpson and, and Sean Doyle? But, you know, today he's done really well. He got uh, two of the goals. Carl Clark got, got the other one. And it, it's really good to see because uh, they're back at home a week today. Uh, which is nice. And I think they've got a home game then again, is it, Rob, the week after? It is, yeah. It's two yeah. on the bounce. So um, it just gives them a chance. And 
I know that uh, you know everyone's been you know waiting for them to come back so they can go and watch them and let's just hope that the big crowds there uh, come back in again. But good performances even before that where they've been getting beaten and uh, just conceding those sort of goals towards the end of the game has been a real kick in the teeth for them. But you know hopefully they'll go back on song and the FA bars it's a great competition to go. And there's some money involved in it as well. As you progress in the competition, you get more dollar. So it all helps uh, pay the bills. So well done to FC Alleman today. Absolutely. And just finally on that point, you've you've sort of touched on it there. Does it feel like vindication a bit for FC Alleman for the fact that they've been putting in these good performances, but the results haven't been coming to get their reward in today's game? That must uh, lift maybe a little bit of burden off some people's shoulders. Yeah, definitely, Rob. And uh, this morning when I sort of heard that, you know, the Manan and what might not have sailed, I don't know how the boys got over whether they flew or by boat, but it's just all sort of sort of chaos that can be coming and sort of in the next couple of weeks, uh, that boat uh, journey stops. So it makes it more difficult for them. But yeah, I think the players are putting some great performances. One or two players uh, have come back in. Fura Davies obviously played for Russian today and scored. Dominic McCarry Brennan was put uh, allowed to play for his club today. So it all helps. And, um, you know, looking at Sean Doyle training the other day, that's a great sight. Dan Simpson's coming back as well. So it all sort of helps the setup, isn't it? Because, um, you know, Sean Doyle, what was it, 39 league goals he scored last year? Uh, absolutely incredible. And you need players like that back in the team because he just, you ping it over to him, Steve Whitley, Lee Gale, Dan Simpson, Charlie Higgins, whoever it is. Ping it over to him and, and Sean will finish. And that's what we need once again. Absolutely. Well, Tony, thank you very much. And we'll be catching up again with you very, very soon. Manx Radio Sport. So moving on to rugby now, and we'll be doing so quite briefly this evening with uh, Dave Christian, sadly unavailable, he's off island, but we do have some results to bring you. So what we can tell you is, and we are just getting the figures up in front of us as we speak. So we'll start with the women's NC1 Northwest. It finished Vagabonds Ladies 30, Eccles 14. In the Counties 3 ADM Lanx Cheshire League, it finished Vagabonds Men's 19, Ellesmere Port 20. In the Ravenscroft Manx Shield, it finished Castletown 19, Nomads Greens 40. And in the Regional 2 Northwest, it finished Douglas 7 and Selmians 75. And we can just bring you a little bit more detail on those results as well. So Vagabonds Ladies, 30-14 winners over Eccles. It's a penalty and three tries from Corinna Daly, two tries from Jules Harrison and one conversion from Sammy Mack. And what I'm told is a very windy day. So an excellent result for Vagabonds Ladies there in the women's NC1 Northwest. Well, for Vagabonds Men's, no details on scorers at the moment, but such a close result for them against Ellesmere Port in the county. 3 ADM, Lanks Cheshire League, losing out by 19 points to 20. A very close game indeed. We do have a little more detail on the Ravenscroft Manx Shield match between Castletown and Nomads Greens. That finished Castletown 19, Nomads Greens 40. So for Castletown, there were tries from Jack Telford, Joel Klukas, and Ross Quayle, and conversions as well from Elliot Burnett and Nick Wilde. And for Nomads, three tries for Max Fairburn. One try from Sean Christian, one try from Andy Lean, and a try as well from Kieran Madrill, and five conversions from Sean Christian as well. Well, we may not have Dave Christian with us, but we're going to take a little bit of a change of approach here. We have a young man in the studio with us today who's been uh, seeing how we do things here on the sports side of the world on Manx Radio, young Archie Callaghan. So he's studying over in Cumbria and has been involved in, quite frankly, almost every sport on the planet. But rugby is a very big side of his game when he's over in, uh, when he's over in Cumbria. He's back for a few days on the Isle of Man. So, um, Archie, well, thanks, thanks very much for, for joining us. No, thank you very much for having me. It's been... Uh been exciting and good so far so I've learned a lot it's been very good that's all we can ask for so as, as a young player on your side of things in the in the rugby game obviously it's a huge part of what um, Seba does of course in, in Cumbria coming through the ranks through the youth rugby system on the Isle of Man how have you found it in years gone by as a place for people to develop their game and get to that senior level yeah I mean from from an early age and from the start the um, the clubs and the com- it was such a community um, being part of it um, and just enjoying it on a more social basis with your friends um, going down every Sunday to training um, and especially with the coaches um, they're so supportive and you know you see them about not just not just at your training but away from uh, away from that with, with family and friends so but then pushing through a bit more I think it became a bit more serious especially when you come to, to school um, that becomes you start playing with, with bigger and better boys um, but yeah I think Especially throughout throughout the years, it's the rugby's the rugby's grown uh, massively. So, 
and the fact that you got the chance to get involved in the Manx system straight away before you where you're continuing your your studies now like you say the, the physicality of the game changes once you get to a certain level did that set you up quite nicely in some ways yeah it did um prior to going to moving away i was, I was training down with the um the senior side and and that definitely set me at the at the level that i was waiting for to you know play um in england so but yeah no the the senior side are so supportive um i'm trying to get you know i go down occasionally and there's there's lads younger than me down there there's lads you know year eight year seven joining with the session so yeah it's uh it's brilliant excellent rugby community i think is probably fair to say as well whether you're playing it to try and get yourself up to a certain level or if you just you know, enjoy the sort of physical competition just as a social side there's there's a side of it for everyone isn't there yeah no of course i think we're starting to see now a lot more a lot of the younger players um playing in senior rugby which is brilliant to see um lads 17 16 17 18 years old um some starting in first teams and then the, the second team so yeah, it's definitely it's it's a game for everyone. Um, there's there's lads who have just started now or have been playing for five six years, so it's brilliant to see a big variety of all age groups playing. Excellent. And just one final question, not just rugby, but I suppose sport in general, because you've you've got you're a jack of all trades when it comes to certain sports, and you have been throughout the last few years. The Isle of Man is a place in general for opportunity for sports. There's so much going on, there's, isn't there? For someone of a young age who wants to to get involved in whatever it is. Yeah, it's it's absolutely amazing. There's there's so many opportunities dotted about um i think well obviously i was involved with the with the swimming with football with with anything and i think once again that sense of community that sense of not everything's it's not all competition um i think sometimes when you take the competition aspect out of out of um out of sport it can become a lot more involving for other players so but yeah within the isle of man there's there's so many opportunities there's there's so many sports to play especially with the facilities and and the schools so yeah, so hopefully it keeps pushing forward now that we're out of the COVID phase and, and sport can come back to its uh, its strongest point. Not only do you seem to have a way with sports, you seem to have a way with words behind the microphone. <laughs> Archie, thank you very much indeed. Really appreciate that. Um, so if if you just missed them before, before we do move on, uh, the rugby scores that have come in today. So in the women's NC1 Northwest, Vagabonds Ladies 30, Eccles 14. In the Counties 3 ADM Lanks Cheshire League, it finished Vagabonds Men's 19, Ellesmere Port 20, played at Ellesmere Port. In the Ravenscroft Mang Shield, Castletown 19, Nomads Greens 40. And in the Regional 2 Northwest, it finished Anselmians 75, Douglas 7. OK, well, that is our rugby roundup so far. We're now going to move on to hockey and the mixed leagues. We're continuing this weekend with a couple of key battles across the divisions. And once again, he's been waiting very patiently right across from me. Ben Cunningham. Ben, very good evening to you. Good evening. How are we? Very well, thanks. Very well as it starts to, as the light starts to fade. It's starting to do that at this time of year. At this time, it's going to get to that time of the year soon, isn't it? Absolutely. Well, let's move on to well, let's get straight into it. The Rossborough Mixed Premier League. There were four games today, and the early pushback was twelve thirty-five. In fact, before we go into a little bit more detail, we will run through the classified results for you from the Saturday hockey fixtures. So, the classified results from Manx Hockey today are as follows: in the Rossborough Mixed Premier League, Vikings A four, Valkyries A one. Castletown Celts 1, Backers A 7, Backers B 2, Ramsey A 0, Vikings B 4, Valkyries B 0. In the Rossborough Mixed Division 1, Vikings C 1, Castletown Southerners 1, Valkyries C 0, Harlequins A 4, Backers C 4, Vikings D 2. And then in the Rossborough Mixed Division 2, Castletown Camags 8, Vikings E 1. Ramsey Rookies 3, Ramsey Ravens 8. Valkyries D 2, Castletown Cushags 0. And in the Rossborough Mixed Division 3, Valkyries Colts 0, Harlequins B 9. Backers Colts 3, Harlequins C 2. Castletown Carrick 1, Backers D 3. And that concludes the classified results from Manx Hockey today. No games in the Rossborough Mixed Under-15s League this week. So, Ben, we'll start off with the Rossborough Mixed Premier League. As we were saying, we were going to the early pushback was at 12.35, and this could have been quite an interesting one, but one side has managed to come out on top on this one. Vikings A, 4-1 winners over Valkyries A at the NSC. Yeah, and that, that brings uh, Vikings A now uh, second in the league, uh, above Valkyries A now, so... Uh, Valkyries A will definitely look to next week get back on to winning form. Uh, for Vikings A, it was Kim Carney with three, Danny Coombs with one, and then for Valkyries A, it was Lewis Nova Smith. But the message says we think. 
So it might have been a big goal scramble to get it in the goal. Could ball. very well be. It does happen plenty of times in <laughs> hockey, doesn't it? So, um, I mean, then we go to the south of the island. There were three games pushing back at five past two. Castletown Celts, they hosted Backers A. And Backers A, this is a big win for them. 7-1 winners away at Castletown Celts. Yeah, and that keeps Backers A at the top of the, top of the league and very much uh, carrying on. So it's uh, Johnny Callow with four, Carl Moore with two, and Donna uh, Donna Harrison with one for Backers A, and then Leo Pass with one for Cast Town Celts. And Backers A, they just really seem to be on a, a roll at the moment, don't they? I mean, what's it going to take to stop them? Um, just keeping them away from the goal, really. I mean, you only need to look today, seven goals. I mean, last week, Falkaias A kept, uh, kept them to down to three. But um, yeah, so it's 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 very much a case of just keeping backers A away from the goal. And backers B, well, they were also in action as well up at Ramsey Grammar School. Two 0 winners over Ramsey A. Yeah, Ramsey A. Unfortunately, they got their win last week, and then this week, unfortunately, they've lost two 0 to backers B. Uh, Tony Bentley Roberts with both goals for backers B, but that's a, a really good win for backers B. Ramsey, they just can't quite seem to find that consistency. They've got some excellent young players in in that squad as well. You know, they brought through, brought through the system over the last few years and plenty of technical ability there, but just can't quite seem to get those results. Why might that be? They've they've had they had a really great season last year, and then I don't know what's happened. I think they've lost a few players to uni in that, um, and unfortunately, it's it's shown, but. You know, I mean, credit to them that they are still pushing on and fighting to keep their place in the Premier League. But it might come down to, uh, it might come down to, it could come down to just the last game of the season, and it could maybe be unfortunate for them. It might be victorious for them, but we'll see. Plenty still to think about. And uh, well, the other game at five past two, this was one that I know you and I had quite an eye on because this was a real battle at the bottom of the mixed Premier League at the moment between Vikings B and Valkyries B, the battle of the B teams. And it's a crucial win for Vikings B, their first points of the season, which takes them above Valkyries B because they've beaten, it's finished Vikings B four, Valkyries B nil. Yeah, and that, like you say, that puts Vikings B now above Valkyries B and Valkyries being now bottom of the league. Um, it's a fantastic result for Vikings B. Uh, John Cooper with two, John Ferrells with one, and uh, Morvan Smith with one. There has been talk over the last couple of years about how difficult sometimes it could be, whether it's in the, the, the mixed divisions or whether it's in the men's and women's, that, that jump between, let's say, Division 1 and into the Premier League structure can be a big step up at times. So... Do you think we'll still see these gaps opening up in the in the mixed Premier League throughout the rest of the season? Um, potentially. I mean, now all the teams have played each other. Um, it, you know, every team will know who you know what to look for in that team and what not to look. You know, what to focus on. Um, it'll be it'll be interesting to see because, like I say, now we're coming to the we've hit the halfway stage, and every team's played each other once. Every team now will be playing each other again and going right. We need to work on, so for example, the back is a Castletown game. You know, Castletown be going, right, we need to look defensive-wise, you know, how to stop back as a from getting through and scoring. Um, it, you, you know, I mean, Falkires B will be probably saying the same. You know, we've lost 4-0 today to Vikings B. So, this, so we need to look at next time when we play them, we need to be more defensive instead of maybe looking to just try and get up and attack maybe just look to be more defensive and hold Viking, Vikings be out. Very well, let's move on to Rossborough Mixed Division 1, the early pushback at 5 past 11, and that was Vikings C and Castletown Southerners, and it finished all square at Castle Russian High School. Vikings C1, Castletown Southerners 1. Yeah, and the report I got was Castletown were on top all game, and that's no disheartened to Vikings C, because um, they've ground, ground, grounded out the uh, result and got a point out of it. Uh, Danny Kelly for um, Viking C and Helena Allen for uh, Castletown Southerners, but one apiece, so you know all to play for in the league. And Viking C, that's uh, you know, that that brings them level with both Castletown Southerners and Backers C in that division. So that's a big point for them at this stage, isn't it? They've been bottom of the table at this point. Yeah, it's a big point, and now, like I say, we've hit the halfway point of the season in the mix in the mixed season. Um, the tables now are looking really, really interesting, and it makes 
good, you know, good fixtures coming up for the rest of the mixed season up to Christmas. Well, on that subject, not just at the bottom of the table of mixed division one, but at the top as well, things could have been blown wide open with half the season to go because the top two met Valkyrie C and Harlequins A at QE2 at five past two today. And Valkyrie C, well, they'll have been favourites going into this. Four points clear they were at the top of the league going into this game. That's now down to two points. Valkyrie C nil, Harlequins A four. I watched this game and Harlequins were three nil up in ten minutes. So I, I Harlequins must have had their Weetabix this morning because because they I, to be three nail up at ha in ten minutes is incredible. <laughs> Sorry, I had to you've been that. you've you've been waiting just <laughs> so, so if, if nobody heard last week on Saturday Sport Classified, Ben loves to get that phrase in when he can. To be fair, completely justified because <laughs> that is a big result that for Harlequins to close the gap to two points with half the season remaining. Oh yeah, absolutely, and I mean, like you say, it brings it brings that. Uh, the, the Valkyrie C lead now to just two points, so you know it's it makes it makes it all to play for now in this league. Uh, for Harlequins, it was Alfie Swales with one, Ronan San Santan Antonio with one, Paul Nuttall with one, and Emily Milton with one. But then also to add into the mix here, Bacchus C and Vikings D. This was a bit of a critical game as well. Like you've mentioned with the points so close together in Mixed Division 1 at the moment. Bacchus C winning against Vikings D by four goals to two today at the NSC. So that actually lifts Bacchus C up above both Vikings D and Castown Southerners. Yeah, Bacchus C will be really glad with that result. I mean, I, I, thought, Bacchus, I thought Vikings D might have maybe just um, got, got the result that out of this but clearly back as C have had other ideas today uh Doug Quayle with three and Penny Webster with one for uh back as C and then for Vikings D it was Jack Woods and Emily Stereo with uh one and then we move to Rossborough Mixed Division 2 and all the games pushed back at 12.35 today. We'll start over at Castle Russian High School and the current league leaders, Castletown Camags, they've been absolutely storming away. A perfect record going into this weekend. Five wins from five. It's now six wins from six with a resounding result against Vikings E. Castletown Camags beating Vikings E by eight goals to one. Yeah, and that, that just proves how how good they're being this season. Uh, for Vikings E, it was uh, Richie Gelder for... Uh, Vikings E consolation goal, and then for Cast Town Camags it was Sam Slight with one, Danny Kelly with one, Sophie Van Hooven with uh, sorry Danny Kelly with two, uh, Sophie Van Hooven with two, uh, Andy Wiggle with one, Eve Watterson with one, and Will Collister with one. Then moving on to the next game, and then we'll have a little look at the two of them and see how they, I suppose, affect things at the top of the table. So Castown Camex has mentioned with the win there, but their, their nearest challenges were Ramsey Ravens. It was a Ramsey Derby up at Ramsey Grammar School today in Mixed Division 2. Ramsey Ravens beating Ramsey Rookies by eight goals to three. Yeah, and it's a shame, really, because I haven't got the eight goal scorers for Ramsey Ravens, um, but I have got Ramsey Rookies goal scorers, and it was Alex Shimon, Dan Stevens, and... Um, and Annalise uh, Meller, but um, yeah, that uh, a derby could go any direction. But Ravens were the favourites for, it and Ravens have got the result for it. Well, with Ramsey Ravens picking up that win, and the team nearest to them, Vikings E, of course, losing out to Castletown Camags, that means that Ramsey Ravens they now have a. I'm looking at this, a five-point gap between themselves and Vikings E in third, and then Ramsey Ravens, of course, three points behind Castletown Camags. It's going to be very difficult for those four teams from third place down to, to catch these two at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, I this, I think this, this league very much is going to be an interesting one to see which team ends up sadly being relegated. But, I mean, you know, cre credit to Ramsey rookies, you know, playing their higher team, you know, it, it, it could have gone either way. And unfortunately, they've put eight goals past them, but credit to them. They've got three past uh, their higher team. So, you know, it's it's nothing to be too disheartened about. Absolutely not. And the other game in Rossborough Mixed Division 2, it finished Valkyries D2, Castletown Cushags nil. Yeah, Castletown Cushags, I, I think if you've got the tables there, Rob, are still bottom of the league with this result. They are indeed with two points. Yep, because uh, Valkyries D were second bottom and it was Mark Perryman with both goals for Valkyries D. Yeah, it's a five-point gap just to add on to that. Castletown Cushags at the bottom on two points. Uh, Valkyries D with that win, now stretching their gap between themselves and Castletown Cushags to uh, th that's uh, three points between the two sides now. That's 
it's always a tough gap to make up, make up at that point because points can be at a premium in the second half of the season if you if you round around those bottom positions. Oh yeah, absolutely. But like like we like we touched on before, it makes you know great fixtures going ahead now for the remainder of the mixed season up to Christmas. Absolutely, and then last but certainly not least, Rossborough mixed Division 3, and it was a bit of a one-sided contest over at QE2 in the 5 past 11 pushback here between Valkyrie's Colts and Harlequins B. It finished Valkyrie's Colts nil, Harlequins B 9, and there is a familiar name that has scored four goals in this game, <laughs> and he sat right across from me. So, Ben, you, you know firsthand what this game was like. Um, tell us why it might have been, scoreline at least, a, a little bit one-sided. Well, credit to Falkyrie's Colts. Last week they had to concede the game because they couldn't field the team because they ended up having to lend players to their D team. Um, this week they started with just 10 players um, and then they eventually got 11 but then didn't have any subs for the whole game. So everybody on that pitch played a whole game and I mean, I, I, I'll name one player. Their keeper was only 13 years old in this game. And I mean, God, God love her. She was only two foot tall and the size of a, a normal hockey goal. I mean, she would have been fine in a junior goal, but the uh, standard uh, senior league game goals. Um, yeah, it was like looking up going Ooh, like that. But credit to it. And she did pull off some really good saves. Um, and I mean, credit to Valkyrie's Colts for not conceding the game and going ahead with it and playing the full game. Um, so for Harlequins B, it was uh, Sam Cunningham with one, Sam Clegg with one, Gemma Quayle with one, Corey Corkill with two. And like you say, I got four, but I, I, I yeah, <laughs> I wasn't trying to be greedy. <laughs> <laughs> just sometimes the way it works out but uh, no as as you mentioned and should, should quite rightly be pointed out huge credit to Valkyrie's Colts for being able to to put a team out it's always oh, yeah. it, it can be very difficult sometimes yeah. so it, it, very good to see that they're able to it was good to enjoy themselves it was good sportsmanship as well Harlequins every time they scored there was no celebration it was just straight back and reset ready to go and it was it was good to see good sportsmanship on the on the pitch. A good side of hockey there. And then, well, the next game here, back as Colts, the current league leaders, scoring goals for fun at the moment. They came up against Harlequin C, but this wasn't an easy task for them. Back as Colts, again, victorious. They stay top of mixed division three, but it was a bit of a close call because they beat Harlequin C of the NSC by three goals to two. And I've heard that Backer's third goal was in the last minute of the game. Um, they were 2-1 up at half-time. Quinn's got it back in the second half to 2 all, And then it looked like it was going to end as a 2 all draw. But Backers just managed to find the back of the goal in the last minute of the game. And, you know, it'll be, it'll be a real shame for Harlequins. You know, they thought they were going to get a point out of it, but sadly not. Uh, Backers' Colts scorers were Sienna Millwall with one, Lucy Cartwright with one, and Alex Stewart with one. And then for Harlequin C, it was Ella Blakemore with one and Caleb Blakemore on his first senior game after just turning 13 on Thursday. And the last game today in the Rossborough Mixed Division 3. It was another battle at the bottom. We've had a couple of those today between Castletown Carrick and Backers D. Big two points for Backers D because they beat Castletown Carrick at QE2 by three goals to one. Yeah, and uh, Sienna, Sienna Millwall again playing for the D team this time because she's obviously eligible to play for two games. She got two goals in this game, so that's three goals for her today. So job well done there. And Christian Davis with one for backers D. And then I think I've just had Castletown's goal scorer. Uh, n- no, I don't think I have. But yeah, Castletown with a consolation goal. But yeah, good result for backers D there. Okay, so those are the individual games. But just one final question before we let you go, and we've we've touched on it already. It's the fact that it's around the halfway point of the mixed league season so far. If you had to sum up how it's been so far across the divisions, would you say it's been suitably competitive? Yes, I I would agree with you. I think every league at the minute is very very close. Premier League, it's only two points the gap at the top between first and second. You know, Div 1, it's the same again. Two points after today's result. Then you touched on Div 2. Div two. You know, you've got a gap there between third and second. But that could all change in a matter of just one game. Results could go either way. And, 
you know, looking at today's results, there's a few stalemates there, which I thought were going to be comfortable wins for other teams. But obviously, I've been proven wrong, so I'm not going to the bookies later. <laughs> well, plenty still to think about. Well, that was Ben Cunningham there with the report. Ben, thank you very much. That's all we have time for on Saturday Sport Classified here on Manx Radio AM 1368. Thank you to my guests here on Saturday Sports, Tony Meppham, Paul Jones, Ben Cunningham and Archie Callaghan making a guest appearance as well. We'll now be handing back over to Christy Dehaven. Until next time, it's bye for now and have a wonderful evening. Manx Radio Sport.